What's going on everyone? Inside of the build, I want to re-attack defense because I did release a video in the first week's inception of the game saying how much defense is too much defense and how to optimize not dying, essentially. Now, this did work in earlier versions of the game, but the later stages of the game matters less and less because of how much more damage you are just going to take. So here we have the Devourer, the hard difficulty, normal difficulty. On the hard difficulty, the firearm attack and the toxic attack are split 50-50. On the normal, the firearm attack and the toxic attack are roughly split 25-75. So inside of normal mode, non-elemental type attack on all of the intercept bosses were way higher on a weighted scale versus the elemental attack. Why that's important will get explained later, and why defense works way more earlier than later in the game. In addition to that, there is the monster stats. So we have firearm attack and electric attack on the executioner, for example. If you increase your defense, you will not mitigate the electric attack, only the firearm attack. So if you want to protect against the firearm attack and the element of the attack that the monster is, you would want both. However, no one wants to run both, so everyone just has to stack hit points. Which isn't the worst way to go about it, but I do think that this is a blanket statement that should be altered. You shouldn't just stack hit points on every build using an external build component list. There's a certain amount of hit points and a certain amount of shields that you will be able to acquire anyway. And I'll go over external components and how to build your character with them now. So first, how external components work. You have regular external components and then you have set external components. The Polar Knight Auxiliary Power is a set. Whenever you have a set component, they will automatically roll with a specific score. If you care more about stats than you do sets, you want to go in and find the one you're looking for, such as the Shield Enhancement Auxiliary Power. That will give you shield, obviously. I am partial to the Slayer set on almost every build because I like doing extra skill damage. And this comes with that nice 26% extra skill power of the game. So I intend to farm the best set of Slayer that I can. It's not a Raichu video without a spreadsheet or a blackboard. This spreadsheet is brought to you by SpongeBob SquarePants. Not a joke. Inside of my Discord, there is a guy. His handle is SpongeBob SquarePants. His Discord and his spreadsheet will be in the link in the comments. The way that the external components work is that there is a base stat that rolls regardless of what you want. And then there's two other stats where it is a random roll. Let me get out. Let me get out your way. The only one that will roll with an additional max hit points is in fact the power unit. Then after that, you have a choice between a resistance. All components can roll with a resistance. Then the auxiliary power unit can roll with MP recovery out of combat. If your character does not have MP, either go with fire resistance or DBNO duration dealer's choice. On the sensor, you get a choice between shield recovery, MP recovery, HP recovery, and maximum MP. I personally will be choosing maximum MP and shield recovery out of combat because those will net me the most amount of damage on target and the most amount of damage mitigation because you have phases in bosses and the shield recovery out of combat will help you get more shield. The memory unit, and this is where I'm going to disagree with a lot of people, defense. This is the only external component that rolls defense, so you might as well put defense on 10,000 defense. You will get a total of 40% damage reduction, or so my Discord says. In either case, I do recommend the damage mitigation will only mitigate non-elemental typed effects. Most attacks are part of one and part of another as far as how much damage gets dealt on target. So I know that slotting defense will mitigate a lot of damage at first when you're first slotting defense. You get a really big bang for your buck. And then the next one will probably be MP recovery modifier or shield recovery in combat depending on my descendant. Ultimate Viessa, I would rather have MP recovery. In the shield recovery in combat, I would want on someone like Isle or Enzo, but either of these would be a fine choice. On the processor, the processor would come with maximum shield and shield recovery. The reason I say this, if you wanted to maximize the amount of damage you did not take, you could remove one of these and put 4,000 elemental resistances on every single element type on the set that you build. This to me is a waste because, because I just like the other effects and I intend to play the way I want to play. 
just like I expect everyone else to do. So in general, whichever set you want to go with or whichever one do you want to maximize, if you want to become the best tank ever using HP, you can go and unlock the HP support units. You can go and unlock the HP support units. However, if you want level 100 components, you're going to have to go do missions. And that is how to build your external components, especially with sets. Basically, the game has determined your build for you and you don't really have to think about it that much. Yes, it is sad that you cannot build that. If you want this spreadsheet, it will be also inside of the link in the description, but I don't need to say that because I put the links in everything in my description. So to run defense or not to run defense, on most of my sets that aren't running as set, I still run 20 to 40k defense. I feel like it just makes me live longer, despite the numbers telling me that it's not really a greatest idea. Instead, I should slot in shield or HP. So how much defense should you run? How much health should you run? How much shield should you run? Everyone is busy finding out the optimal number for this, but I don't think there is one because it's heavily ascendant dependent. If I am Ajax, and my goal is to build the best Ajax ever. How, what is the best Ajax ever? Is he someone that's focused on being able to solo all of the content in the game? If that's the case, you'd want to build him a different way. So I truly believe that every descendant is build dependent in different variables. So I would like to say that at a certain point of hit point value, the increased defense becomes worth it for most descendants. Because at a certain point, when you have enough health, this actually matters quite a bit because you have a mitigation percentage of non-elemental attack and that mitigation percentage essentially multiplies the rest of your health bar because you aren't taking that much damage. But it also multiplies your shield bar. Worth it at a certain point because the amount of work you have to do at base. So here I have about 4000 damage takeable points on my Valby currently. If I were to put increased shield on at 151%. I would get a total of 1200 shields. If I have 20% damage mitigation from a defense mod, I would instead get 20% of 4000, which is 1000. So I would gain 1000 damage takeable points split up on my stats bars. That is worth it for a module. However, I would probably have to remove cooldown damage or some sort of resource production. The biggest bang for your buck will be Stim Accelerant, because 234% of your HP is quite a chunk, unless you are a shield dependent descendant, in which case you'd actually prefer HP conversion. This is essentially trading 50% for 150%, but if you're an Enzo, you don't really care about your HP. And I run this on Kyle because Kyle's magnetism force gauge is based off of his shield. So whichever I have, I double in the magnetism gauge. So essentially, this is giving me 450% damage takeable points on Kyle if I equip this. Worth it. And then I would run shield anyway because it has no time. If I'm trying to be a tank, which I YOLO'd everything into damage with my Kyle and I have 7,000 damage takeable points and an increased defense mod because my magnetic force gauge is double my shield. So while it says 7,000 on paper, I actually have 12,000. This will give me at least 10% mitigation. So 10% of 12,000 is 1,200 damage takeable points with this module. Stim Accelerant will give me 2,700 points. So should I equip Stim Accelerant? No, because of magnet magnetic force and defense being so good on Kyle's replenishable force gauge. That is why it is very heavily descendant dependent, like Hypercube. It is based off of the HP of the caster's HP and the caster's defense. But at the end of the day, whatever score the external components give you, these are the scores from your external components. They will be multiplied to spear and shield or to iron defense. I made a video if you want to check that out. But the 100% defense will in fact mitigate a lot of non-elemental damage for you. Or so it would seem if we get the 89% of defense on Spear and Shield is definitely worth it because it comes with a skill power module. Would I run increased defense? It really depends on what I'm doing and my character. I would run it on an Ajax because of Hypercube. And if a certain descendant had a defense related ability where the power of the ability was predicated on my defense, I would run more defense because then it matters. 
in Ajax's case, his shield is his shield. You actually don't even need shield for Ajax, in my opinion. I think he's one of the few characters that are best with, with overwhelming HP. And this is because the shield isn't based off of his shield, it's based off of his hit points. So if you can give your shield more hit points, you want to run hit points. But the defense that comes with the defense mitigation that comes with running defense mods is good enough to run on Ajax. I do not main Bunny, but I would just slot all of the health points I could on Bunny because she gets clapped. She's running around in the field of battle, always in the crap. So you're going to need as much health on her. And the part of that is that when she's running, she'll pick up the health orbs. If you're running a sniper character like Sharon, I would actually prefer more shields on Sharon than hit points. Although you get less shield per point value with external components, I would prefer more shields on Sharon because she's very ranged and very deliberate in her actions. As you can see, typically the amount of hit points that you gain versus shield that you gain, half the shield versus the amount of hit points you could gain. And this is because shield recharges itself. So you need less of it, or so the game would say. I think Enzo is the only person I would ever put overwhelming shield on. However, that's real risky because the game hurts. The problem with overwhelming shield is that when you go down and you get revived, you get revived with one hit point. That's the problem with overwhelming shield. As of now, all of my builds, my defense runs between 15 and 25,000, depending on the descendants base defense, because once I find the optimal Slayer set that I talked about before, I probably won't take it off for any Descendant, and I will just remain having the Slayer set on, with the exception of a couple Descendants that aren't really meant for dealing skill damage. Like, Enzo is a Firearm Attack Specialist, so I probably won't use the Slayer set on Enzo. Same for Glay. And then Freyna obviously has her own set that I actually enjoy. If you're going to go for straight health or straight defense, I recommend the HP support and the shield enhancement support. Just remember that every shield enhancement, every memory unit, you should pick defense on. Even if you think it doesn't do anything, it will mitigate quite a bit of damage if you have nothing else on your character. That one defense boost will feel like a lot. A good replacement for a defense module is going to be auto immunity. This sports a 10% incoming damage modifier and increases your HP recovery by 7%. This is probably the best defensive module inside of the first Descendant for defense. The iron defense, the iron defense module we just put on because we just want every little tiny sliver of damage we can get out of this game. Not everyone can be Glay, so we, we're doing our best out here. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. All the links for the products inside of this stuff I use today will be in the description of the video, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace out.